top 15 of the best Roblox Bed Wars skills that will save you. Also, subscribe. For number one, we have using the Electra Kit and the Hammer. Now, if you don't know, guys, this is currently one of the best kit combos in the game that you could use right now because there is currently a glitch. Well, not really a glitch, but there's a combo that you can do. You can use the Electra Kit's dash ability and the Hammer's swing ability to make an insanely deadly combo. Now, to do this skill, basically, all you gotta do is charge up the Hammer and then as you let go, it normally does stop you. But what you can do is as you swing, you can use the Electro Dash to just dash into your opponents while swinging and they won't even expect it. This is a really deadly combo that you can use on your unsuspecting opponents because they are literally never going to notice this. Anyways, for number two, we have using the brand new Milo kit to steal emeralds and iron from AFK people in 30v30. Now, if you guys haven't already checked out the new Milo kit yet, it is a really interesting interesting troll kit basically you can turn into blocks and steal people's resources and with this in mind it makes it a perfect kit for something like 30 v 30 the reason why is you can just basically turn into a block and sneak into the enemy's base and then just steal a whole bunch of resources from your opponent and especially if you're later into the game and your opponent has a tier 3 generator you can just go up to the people that are trying to afk grind and steal their resources it makes it a really overpowered kit for getting a a lot of resources really really quickly and i've seen people get up to hundreds of emeralds just by doing this skill anyways for number three we have mastering the pirate davy to escape from your enemies now of course guys pirate davy is probably one of those kits that has the hardest learning curve of all of the kits basically you get sort of this cannon that you can launch yourself in and you can actually pair this with a stone pickaxe to just instantly break the cannons so if you guys end up actually mastering this kit you can easily rush, escape, and travel around the entire map just by using the cannons. It makes it a really overpowered kit when used correctly, and if you guys just spend maybe a couple hours practicing the cannons in customs on some of the different maps, then you'll be absolutely unstoppable. Anyways, for number four, we have an easy counter for players that like to build up to high ground. I'm sure you guys are aware of the infamous building up to get a nice combo strategy that almost every single player uses at this point, but there is actually a pretty sneaky counter to it. If you see your opponents building up, you should probably also build up as well and try also build up faster than them. That way, as soon as they jump down, they're going to realize that you're also towering up and then you're going to have the high ground. And then this is when you can repeat their own strategy against them and just jump down and get a nice, quick and easy combo on them. It's a really unexpected play that not many people realize and especially if your opponent has terrible game sense they're not gonna notice you building up towards them for number five we have pearling a fruit blocks to get a unexpected play on your opponents now if you guys don't already know you can actually use a teleport item to teleport through your blocks you can teleport through a few layers of blocks and it honestly just makes a teleport so much better of an item if you're playing on a really big map that has like a lot of structures and castles i would honestly recommend and if you're trying to escape your opponents i would honestly recommend just teleporting up because that way you'll go through the blocks and it's going to make your opponents a lot harder to get to you you can also teleport through players blocks as well so i would really keep that in mind when building up really high and building a nice big sky base and for number six we have telebridging with the cps cap now i'm sure you guys know what telebridging is it's a very og strategy that a lot of pros used to do to flex on everyone else in the lobby and ever since bed was introduced the cps cap a really long time ago it's never really been possible until i figured out how to easily telebridge in roblox Bed was basically all you have to do is position your mouse slightly down, jump, and just walk forwards. Don't sprint, make sure you are walking. Make sure that your cursor is actually below the block and not on top of the block. And literally just jitter click, look down, and spam the jump button. And then that's it. You are telebridging. Just make sure you don't start sprinting because that way you will actually be walking faster than you can place blocks. Now, although telebridging doesn't have very many use cases, besides maybe throwing your opponents off guard, it is still a pretty cool flex that you can do to assert dominance over your enemies. The next skill that will definitely end up saving 
giving you from your enemies in Roblox Pet Wars is subscribing. Because I'm giving my subscribers that are early to my videos and that like my videos a free kit. So if you guys want to get yourselves a free kit to use in your games, make sure you like this video and that you're early to this video and my next video and I might slide you guys a kit. Anyways, on with the video. And for number eight, we have using blocks to counter sword and bow attacks. Now, this is a semi new skill that not too many people know about or utilize in their games. And basically, you can just sort of use blocks to actually counteract people trying to hit you with a sword or a bow. Basically, just sort of place blocks that are sort of on your high level. So your enemies will basically have to jump over the blocks or try and shoot at your toes. It just makes it that little bit more difficult to actually hit you. And you can sort of lead and get some sneaky, sneaky attacks off of your enemies if your opponent is not expecting it. And for number nine, we have a counter to people that build just way too high. In almost all of my solos games, guys, I get those people that just build to the absolute sky limit and it is so annoying. There have been a number of times where I'm just breaking someone's bed and as soon as I break their bed, they just tower a million blocks into the air. And there is actually a couple different counters to this that you definitely need to know. Within saying that, you can also buy a teleport to instantly teleport to your enemy's sky base. However, it does cost two emeralds and isn't that efficient for early game. You can also buy a fireball or a bow. However, those are also pretty costly in iron. My absolute favorite counter to this would definitely be just bridging up three blocks at a time, saving myself not only blocks and iron, but also catching up to my opponent way quicker. If you guys didn't already know, not only can you just tower up two blocks, if you time it perfectly, you can actually tower up three blocks at a time instead, which makes catching up to your opponent so much easier, especially if they're up high in a massive sky base. And for number 10, we have huge using the back to base feature in a corner to avoid getting knocked away. This is honestly a very sneaky trick, but it is also very situational. Now, if you guys didn't know, you could actually just back up into a corner and use the recall feature to actually teleport back to your base without getting interrupted. However, to do this trick effectively, it only does work on some maps, but you can just sort of tell up like this and use the recall feature without getting knocked by fireballs, bows, or swords. You can still take damage and recall at the exact same time. Honestly, I'm not quite sure how long this trick is gonna last purely because I think the Bad Wars developers are gonna patch it. And for number 11, we have a seven block extension jump. Honestly, this is one of the more difficult skills to learn, but basically the farthest you can jump in Roblox Bed Wars is around four blocks, sometimes five blocks depending on your situation. And especially if you're not using any kids, jumping an extra three blocks is going to be absolutely crucial and there is an easy way to do it. Using your blocks, you can actually perform a seven block jump if you just place enough blocks in front of you. I've done this many times before and it has saved me from so many different situations and, it's, and sometimes I'm able to just completely clutch the game purely because I'm able to make this sort of jump. And for the next skill, we have using the forest and the hatter to get back to 150 HP. Now the forest is probably one of the best enchants in the game purely because not only does it give you extra health back, it also does a little bit of extra damage on your weapons. And one of the major downsides about using the Hatter Kit is that you get your 150 HP deducted to 135 HP, which is a big, big risk, especially for late game. And an easy counteract to this is actually just getting the forest enchant because by dealing damage to enemies, you are able to just get your max HP right back up to 100. 150. And for the next skill, we're going to be talking about how you can actually completely counteract the new Surge TNT item. Now, if you guys aren't already aware, Obsidian was recently buffed to where the price was actually deducted from two emeralds to one emerald. So you can buy a crap ton of Obsidian now. And if you guys didn't already know, Surge TNT cannot break Obsidian. And since it is really, really cheap now, you can easily get your hands on some Obsidian. If you're playing a game mode like Squads, I would definitely recommend just instantly rushing mid to get obsidian over your bed because it only costs two emeralds and it may save you the game. Anyways, for the next skill, we have combining the crossbow and the barbarian. Now, a quick tip with the barbarian, you can actually gather up your rage if you use something like a crossbow. You don't necessarily have to go in for sword combat PvP fights all the time. You can actually instead just use a ranged attack. 
And since you don't technically have to forge up the sword to get a Rage Blade, you can instead forge up the bow and just get a Headhunter to just absolutely destroy your opponents. And not only that, you can also get your hands on the best sword in the game as well. And for the next skill, we have Timing Electra Jumps. Electra is one of the most overpowered kits in the game right now because if because of its double dash ability You can actually traverse most of the map just by using the electro jumps if you time them correctly Now because the electro jumps actually do boost you up slightly if you're playing a solos map, you can actually do a zero iron rush to your opponent's base purely just by placing a couple blocks and dashing forwards. But time your jumps perfectly, so you wait maybe a split second before actually jumping and then use your second dash ability to get to your opponent's base. And for the next skill, we have using the dagger combo effect to counteract the hammer. Now, a lot of people are honestly really annoyed at people that are using the hammer right now. And I honestly have no idea why, because the hammer is just one of the best weapons in the game. But a nice easy counter to the hammer is actually just using the dagger instead. The, since the dagger does have a combo ability, you can actually use it to get a nice, quick, and sleek combo on your opponents that are using the hammer because of its long, because of its really long and slow swing speed. However, while using this trick, I would be really careful because hammer users can just use gloops to disable that combo ability. 